What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the new version of Alt-Tab's Fog Creation add-on, Alt-Tab Easy Fog 2. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Alt-Tab Easy Fog 2 is a new version of the original add-on Alt-Tab Easy Fog. So we've talked about that one in the channel before. It's probably one of the easiest to use um, fog add-ons for Blender and it's very inexpensive. Uh, this one is kind of similar, but it has an upgraded user interface. It's got additional presets and some other tools that are contained in here. Um, note that there is a personal version and a commercial version. You can also download the demo version if you want to in order to try it out. Note that if you are an Alt-Tab Easy Fog 1 user, you can use this discount code that you can find at the bottom of the page in order to get a discount. So if you do wanna go check out Alt-Tab Easy Fog 2, I will link to it in the notes down below. Note that is an affiliate link, meaning I do receive a commission if you purchase through that link. But let's go ahead and let's jump over into Blender and take a look at the way that this works. All right, so we're gonna use this low poly winter scene from Sketchfab from the author uh, Edwix uh, GG. So if you do wanna download this and follow along, you can do that by searching for the scene on Sketchfab. All right, so first off, this is gonna come with two downloads. It's gonna come with an add-on file, which you're gonna to wanna to install, but there's also a blend file that you can link to in the asset browser. So uh, we're not gonna to get too far into the asset browser version, but just note that these fog presets are down there in the asset browser if you do install that. But you wanna make sure that you've gone into your preferences under add-ons, and you wanna make sure that you've installed and enabled Alt-Tab Easy Fog 2. It's gonna be the larger zip file. Just um, install that as an add-on in order to get started. All right, so the way that this works is they've changed the user interface a little bit, right? Now you've got options in here for your volumes and your VDBs. And so you can select volumes or VDBs, and then there's a little drop down for the different kinds of things, right? So there's ground fogs, um, and notice how they only show up in here, and if you click on this, these are gonna show up. So you can do an all or just do those specifically. But notice how you've got multiple different kinds of presets in here for doing different things. So first off, you've got your fog types, and um, there's a number of different fog types to choose from from. So in this situation, for example, say that I wanted to add this ground fog one right here. So this one's not especially interesting. We'll take a look at the others as well. But let's say that we wanted to add this in here. Well, I'm just going to select the whole thing. So I'm going to do a select hierarchy. Then I'm going to click on fog it up. And so one thing you do want to do is you want to make sure this box is centered on your model and also like big enough, right? So I'm just going to go into a top down view right here. And you want it to contain this whole thing. So I'm gonna scale it up a little bit more. And I'm also gonna move it so that it's aligned with the bottom of my scene like this. So we just wanna make sure that that whole domain is in here um, so that you're getting the full fog experience. And so you could probably scale this a little bit too. So I'm going to move this down so that your fog's really only inside of this domain and you're not doing a whole bunch of additional calculation. One thing you might've noticed is if you were in material preview mode, you're going to see nothing in here. This is kind of a rendered only type thing. And so if I jump over into rendered mode, it's gonna look something like this right here. And I might go ahead and bump up the brightness of my sun just a little bit. We've got this set to kind of a blue light um, in here, but then I've got some point lights in here as well. But what this is doing is this is creating a fog object that you can select. And when you select it, you can make adjustments to it. Like for example, notice how I can bring this density way up or way down, right? If I bring the density way up, then my fog's going to look something like this. So making adjustments to the density is really easy using this slider right here, but then you've also got other options in here as well. And so that density distribution is going to affect the denseness of your fog. Notice how you don't necessarily wanna switch these, though this gives you kind of an interesting snowy look in here, but you can use that to adjust how dense the fog is. But then down below, you've got options to adjust the color. So I can click in here, say I wanted this fog to have a certain color associated with it, right? So right here, for example, I can select a green. Notice how I start getting some green hues in here like this. And we might see it a little bit better if we bring that density up a little bit. But notice how I start getting some green colors in here. So you can adjust the color of the fog. And then down below, there's an option for mapping. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna to toggle this fog off and pick another one 
and drop it in here. So in this case, let's pick something a little bit more interesting, like maybe this ground fog right here. Note that the ones with the little purple things on them indicate that they are animated, meaning that they're moving. So if I just pick this ground fog right here and click on fog it up, it's going to add that fog in here. And again, you wanna make sure that that domain is actually um, aligned with the size of the bounds of your model. So we'll just move it, scale it, Move it up right here. Notice how, by the way, this fog is kind of at the bottom of that domain. Now you can affect the location of that fog by adjusting the Z value, right? So notice how when I move this up and down, it's going to affect that. So you can do that as well as moving that domain around in your scene like this. And so once we've got that kind of adjusted and set up, notice how that's giving us that thick ground fog effect. And I can move this up and down in order to adjust that like this. But Notice how, and you can kind of see it. You might see it a little bit better if I jump over into EV, but EV doesn't really give us a super great result. But you can see how this fog is actually kind of moving and animating in here because this is one of the animated fogs. So you can actually use this to render out an animated fog scene inside of Blender. Now, one thing to note about this is because this is a cycles tool, right? This is mostly going to be a cycles thing. Um, that does mean that your performance is probably going to be a little bit slower. I mean, obviously it's going to be better if you have a better computer, but just know that because you are calculating the scattering of light in here, um, sometimes your renderings can take a while longer just because these are very complex renderings. But you've got other options in here, like the thicker ground fog, for example, which is super interesting. So if I bring that in here, and usually this does a better job of like auto finding the size or the bounds in here. Probably has something to do with the Sketchfab model that I'm using, but notice how you can use this in order to create this way like thicker fog. It's a little bit more interesting, almost like clouds, right? See how these clouds are kind of like rolling through here like this. Now this one is not animated, right? If I drag the slider, there's no animation associated with it, but um, there are a lot of different fog options in here that are going to do different things, right? You can also use this to add things like clouds. So if I click on a cloud right here, click on fog it up, that's gonna add a cloud object, which I can select and I can move around in my scene like this. And that one's interesting because notice how you're getting a little bit of reflection of your light up in your scene as well. So if you wanna add things like clouds, this also has the ability to do that. And so note that some of these also have a noise texture in here. So if I was to add fog to this one right here, notice how this one has a noise texture and you can use the noise texture to adjust the fog noise that's in here. So notice how I can use this to actually adjust the size and the detail level of the fog, right? So I can bring this up or down in order to create different things. So this is gonna give you the ability to adjust things like the detail of the fog. You can use the seed in order to kind of randomize the fog in here like this really quickly. And so you've also got some other interesting things in here. Like for example, if I scroll down, you've got things like the smoke walls. So if I add a smoke wall in here, and so if I add a smoke wall in here, that's basically going to be an animated wall of smoke. So, and you can barely see it. Um, you can kind of see it moving around just with the pixels right here, but obviously it's trying to render this out, but that's basically going to be an animated wall of smoke. So what you could do is you could put that between your camera and the object that you're trying to see, and then you could render out an animation of the moving smoke using that tool. So we've also got similar tools in here for doing things like tornadoes. So if I add a tornado right here, so we're just gonna add fog. And so if I look at this on the backside, this is basically a tornado that's going to um, rotate in your animation. So you can use this in order to create this kind of like, uh, this kind of like foggy tornado look in here. And then these like magic puff items um, and wisp items down below. These are animated items that are designed to be used more for like product type animation and things like this. But you can see how this is actually, and I can jump out of my camera view for a second just so you can see this. This is actually a volume that goes around this object, but it's animated and it moves. And so when it moves, basically that's something that you can use in order to create more of a product style animation or something like that, where it looks like your object is actually sitting in fog. 
All right, and so in addition, we also have some VDB files. And this is actually a surprisingly large library considering none of this, I don't think, was included in the first version. But you've got different smokes, you've got different explosions, you've got clouds in here that, all go that are all going to act as VDBs. Doesn't look very good in material preview mode, but if you jump over into rendered mode right here, we're gonna go ahead and jump into cycles. If you really want these to render out well, you wanna jump into cycles. But if you look at this, you've got these explosion files in here like this. Now, I don't think these are animated. I'm not 100% sure. I think they're just kind of fixed. And so you can come in here and you can adjust different things about the explosions. And one cool thing about this is, say that I was to add a torus. So we're just gonna add a torus in here like this. Notice how this is actually generating light in here, meaning that VDB file is actually acting as an explosion and you're gonna get reflections off of geometry in here like this. And so there are a bunch of different things that you can adjust in here. And so I don't think the VDB functionality in here is really unique to this add-on as opposed to anything else that I've reviewed on the channel. It's more like an, a good addition to make this like a full-on suite of different things, right? Because it's got your clouds, it's got your smoke, as well as all the fog functionality, which really makes this a pretty good library of just stuff that you can use in Blender to create these kinds of images. And again, remember that you're going to adjust the density of those and you're gonna want a light in your scene um, if you're gonna do something like a cloud. So let's say we had a sun in here. So this doesn't cast light, it just interacts with it. So um, if I was to adjust this up to like five or something like that, notice how this is giving us this like full on VDB cloud in cycle. So you can use this in order to create these volumetric clouds in the background. So overall, I, I feel like there's actually been a fair number of things that have been added to this um, between the different fog settings, the different uh, the different volume presets and other things like that, and the VDBs. Um, this is actually a pretty complete add-on for simulating basically these kinds of volumes. So I'm fairly impressed with this, especially for the cost, which is not especially high for what this is. Um, I think this is a great addition. All right, so if you do wanna go check that out, I will link to it on this page. Note that is an affiliate link. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.